Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a strategy breakdown of Mythic Queen Ashara. Now, we killed this boss yesterday night, uh, and I thought that it'd be a good idea to put out a full breakdown because this is quite a complicated fight, and I'm just going to go, go through phase by phase, uh, talking about how you should approach each one separately. So before we even get started looking at the raid comp here, you want to take two tanks, um, Preferably, if you can, Brewmasters. Uh, if you can't have two Brewmasters, have at least one Brewmaster. The second one can be like a Paladin or a Death Knight. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can kind of make it work with anything. Maybe not a DH just quite yet. Also, whenever I talk about anything in this fight, I also assume that at least about half your raid is at level 65 neck, mainly your DPS, uh, because there are quite a few DPS checks. Now, the method and the limit strategy are great. And I know a lot of people want to just go ahead and copy those, uh, you know, moment for moment. But those strategies are not going to apply to any other guilds. Uh, every other guild that killed it ever since, like, the third week of the raid uh, has been using a different strategy. And that is the strategy that we are using in this video as well. So this is going to be more relevant if you're progging this boss later on. Uh, phase 1 is quite simple, basically you want all your DPS to pop their 2 minute and 3 minute cooldowns on pull, you pull the bosses together and you just cleave them. Uh, for healers, you can bring 1 Disc Priest, 1 Holy Paladin, and the 3rd healer spot is kind of open to either a throughput healer, like a Rest of Druid, or you can just bring another Disc Priest for that extra damage and extra shielding, because obviously shields are going to be a lot more beneficial whenever you have reduced HP in the later phases. Now for DPS, you want at least two Warlocks. Um, if you have two Warlocks, then you want one Shadow Priest to go along with that. Or if you have three Warlocks, then you don't really need the Shadow Priest. But that's just going to be for the spells in Phase 2 and 3. And then for melee DPS, you want one Rogue, ideally, at least, uh, that helps your Phase 1 a little bit. And then one super heavy, like, AoE DPS, like a Frost DK or a Red Paladin, which will help you with the adds in Phase 2. The rest is just, you know, bring whatever you can. So in the first phase, like I said, everyone pops their cooldowns on a pull. And then one person, um, ideally a two minute class like a mage, will hold their cooldowns and pop it whenever this first Hulk spawns. So as you can see it spawned, I'm going to use my combust. And I'm just going to use all my cooldowns into this Hulk. So as soon as it starts running away, it gets stunned. And this is where the rogue comes into play. You can see that the Hulk is actually kidney shot. And the rogues uh, run the prey on the weak talent that makes this Hulk take 10% increased damage. Now, that just makes phase 1 a lot easier for everyone else. To kill the Hulk, you stun it essentially when it gets to the edge of this big circle. Uh, that's just so the melee can chase if they get a bad beam. Um, and then you just kill it and move on. In this first phase, you will only need 5 ranged DPS soaking. Um, I have a soak weak aura right here on my screen. You don't really need the weak aura, but it makes things a little bit easier because you can tell exactly how many stacks there are left. Uh, without the weak aura, you, you kind of have to guess. But in phase 1, there are 20 stacks total, so you just divide that up amongst 5 ranged players, so each one soaks 4 stacks. And the last person soaking should be right after the second Hulk. As soon as you drag these bosses together, you essentially are going to just DPS them down to about 15%, maybe 10%. As the second Hulk comes out, then you're going to stop damage on them. And this is because you want to get the second set of orbs, soak them, and then push the phase. This is going to ensure that in the second phase, all your 3-minute cooldowns are back up. So as you can see, the second Hulk spawns, everyone swaps to it. And we just kill it as fast as possible. Both the bosses are quite low HP at this point, so we're just stopping damage completely. Now I go to soak, I go up to four stacks, and then we just wait for these orbs. So I fast forward here a little bit, the orbs spawn, we start soaking them, and right as we finish soaking them, we want to finish these two bosses because we want to avoid this charge spear from happening that's happening right here. If this goes off, your whole raid will take a huge burst of damage right before the intermission, and that's not exactly ideal. So you basically just move on with this, uh, you face the bosses, and then you go to the stack point. Now for the intermission, there's quite a few ways of dealing with this. We are doing the method strat here, uh, which is 
essentially just it's pretty straightforward we have our orange group run here this is going to be our uh, group and stack we have one group and stack up here in this corner with everyone running around in a circle and then our three solos are going to be here up there and then the second one is up there um, and then whoever gets this solo goes left this solo goes right so this is a stay and soak stay and soak and then whoever gets the blue marker which is stay and group or a group and don't soak just moves up to this point right here so it's a fairly standard setup uh, let's move on with this you will see that the decrees come out here and everyone just splits up now if you get the group plus run which is when you have to run around this little circle uh, if you keybind your keyboard turning to like your arrow keys or something while you're doing this you can just hold forward and hold the keyboard turn key and that's going to make the perfect circle and you essentially never get stacks but we i'm not even going to fast forward so we move into phase two for phase two there are a few things to mention first of all your melee should be the first one soaking because they haven't soaked up to this point in the fight so whenever you drag the boss to the center here you want all your melee to take turns soaking and you never want more than two people in the rune at the same time talking about positioning a little bit uh, you're going to essentially have your melee just dpsing the boss your tank tracker to the center and then you wait for the adds um, your range dps should be playing near the console here so you can dip back and get a stack reset if you have to typically you won't have to during this first part of the phase because you just want to burn the boss these beckons if you have uh, two paladins you bop both of them if you only have one paladin with bop like we do then you just bop the dps who gets it okay so the ads come the ads make it to the center and basically here you just want to set up a fairly standard cc rotation where you're going to leg sweep them uh, then you use another stun we chose to use a warlock stun after leg sweep and then our mage is standing right there on that yellow dot uh, he's going to dragon's breath them and after the dragon's breath our holy priest or this priest rather will knock off of that mage and knock those adds towards the console and all of the adds will just get cleaved down at that point you will see the leg sweep the stun and then right as i line of sight to reset my stacks here they get knocked and it's important that a mage does it because if you get this bad beam they can just blink across and make it back to the console so at this point you just want to tank the boss right here on this corner um, so then you can reset stacks easily in this little area of the console you just line of sight right here for a split second you reset your stacks and then you go back and move on with dpsing so the next part here is the arcane burst as you saw three of them just spawned and this is where having two warlocks becomes important if you look right here that's a tiny little imp just afking there and that is just moved there for dispel purposes so the warlock imps will just be moved into position so they can dispel whenever these bursts happen and you just assign uh, one warlock to each dispel if you have two of them then you just assign them to the first two and the third one will be a, a shadow priest will have to mass this spell uh about right here and that's going to actually hit the person and dispel them but with warlocks you just move your imp into position make sure it's on passive make sure it's on stay otherwise it might try to just move around a little bit um and those people just get dispelled so you will see here real quick how this plays out person gets dispelled run back second person gets dispelled run back third person gets dispelled run back and it's super straightforward there's not much um to to min max as far as you know how you do this you either want to have a weak aura that just assigns an order or you have your big wigs just mark these players and have a specific marker order like circle goes first then x then blue or whatever your markers happen to be um then for this phase you essentially just want to soak to five maybe six stacks max it doesn't really matter that much um the way the soaks work whenever a stack is applied if you're still in the within the circle the next stack immediately gets queued up now if that happens and you're staying in the circle for another second 
then you essentially just get an extra stack and that will just happen. So I aim to soak to five and if I mess up a little bit, then I happen to go up to six. So then the next important thing in this phase is your push timing. The boss phase is at 68.5% um, and there's essentially two timings where you can push the boss. So the first one that we aim to do is beating the arcane or the beckon that happens right after these arcane bursts. So as you can see, arcane burst is coming out in 2.2 seconds right here. So whenever that arcane burst comes out, if the boss is at 70.5% or lower, then you're good and you're on pace to beat the beckons. If the boss is higher, like she is right here, she's at 72.2, she's going to be at about 71.5, I think, or 72, uh, whenever these bursts come out, that means we're behind pace. And if that happens, we're going to actually get the beckons as we move into the intermission. So if you're behind on damage, you just want to hold your DPS a little bit, deal with the beckons, then move into the intermission. You get a 10 second period um, or 10 second window after the beckons to actually just finish off this phase. So as soon as these uh, arcane bursts go out, everyone moves to the stack point. And the last person right here uh, should get gripped if you're on pace to beat these beckons. And the beckons I was talking about are happening right here, happening in 3.3 seconds. The boss is still at 69.4%. So we are not on pace to beat these. Uh, but depending on your DPS, some pools we beat it, some pools uh, we miss this window. So it just kind of comes down to however things line up on that specific pool. So we'll play this, we get the beckon. Now second intermission I'm not going to talk about because it's essentially the exact same as the first. You just want to keep DPSing the boss. And uh, skip forward a little bit here. And you move into phase three. So phase three, I believe, is the most difficult part. This first add is probably the easiest of the three because you assign DPS cooldowns to it. Typically, you will have your three mages or whoever has two minute cooldowns. You have three or four two minute cooldowns assigned to it. We had the three mages and we also had our Destro lock all cooldown this one add. Everyone else used their cooldown on their second adds. Um, so the tank will still tank the boss in the P2 position because that allows the entire raid to stack up essentially on X and uh, that will make sure that you don't get these uh, arcane vulnerability stacks during the phase so that's one less thing to worry about. Now here you essentially just burn the boss or this, this add rather and as soon as you kill it whenever you get to about 20% your entire raid will just book it towards the second add, except for a few DPS who are super mobile, like mages, rogues, warriors, uh, anyone who can blink over or like shadow step, anything like that, kind of stays behind and finishes off this add. As soon as she's dead, uh, like you saw here, she needs to die before she actually cast the first shield, then you can move over to the next add. So right here, you just need to make sure you line of sight this arcane detonation, and then you can move over. So what determines which direction you move in towards the second add is simply the beam that you get. In this video here, we got this beam going this way. So that meant that we can easily just move up this way and deal with this as our second add. If we got the opposite beam that came in this direction, then we would have went to the other ad. So it just depends on which beam you get on which ad you go to. In this phase, again, it's fairly straightforward. You just use this pillar to line of sight. The stack point will be right where the pillar and this ward meet. All the arcane bursts will just run here to this little orb and line of sight to get this spell. So that means that uh, warlock pets will be stationed right here. And as you can see, we also have a warlock gate that is right here and that is for the beckons if you get beckoned you essentially just take this gate which gates you that way um, and just make sure make sure that you're safe otherwise you might not be able to run far enough because whenever the boss is tanked right on that other edge of the pillar the night elf that actually mcs you can spawn all along this edge so this lock gate just makes sure that you get far enough 
I roll the footage here. So we stack up, we use the spear from the Myrmidon to actually break this shield, and you just go in DPS the add. And at this point, I think all guilds should try and actually kill this add within one shield break. If you need to get two shield breaks, then you need to make sure this Myrmidon stays alive. Um, and also you might need to leave like three or four DPS behind to finish the add off while your entire raid just transitions over. So in this video, we actually got the shield break that didn't happen every single pull. So we just move over. And at this point, it's super important to actually have your entire raid soak blues. Uh, so as you can see, there's 13 stacks on blues. And it doesn't matter which one you soak. Uh, right is where we kill the second add. Now we are at the left rune. So as a mage, I can double blink over super quickly, which is why I just double blinked here and I'm going to instantly start soaking. If you're a slower class, you might either want to soak a little bit sooner um, or take a log it or something over to this rune so you can ensure that it gets soaked down super quickly because this is probably the sketchiest part of phase three. So in this phase, um, this is the third add and this is the second Myrmidon. So the second Myrmidon is absolutely useless. You essentially just want to kill it as fast as possible. You ignore the third add completely, you just cleave onto it. Uh, you essentially focus all of your damage into this Myrmidon because you want it to die because pretty soon after this you're going to be getting the third Myrmidon. So we use the second spear on this add to actually break the shield. We finish off the add right before it casts its third spear and that is when the third Myrmidon will be coming out as well. Uh, so as you can see here, third Myrmidon is spawning. Add has no shield, uh, so at this point we're just essentially back on Myrmidon duty and we just want to basically take this phase slow and just deal with all the adds and cleave everything down kind of equally. So Myrmidon comes out, everyone uh, switches their focus into it and you just want to kill this Myrmidon before it gets two spears. So you will use one spear from it to break the shield and that is going to be happening while I'm being beckoned here. But we break the shield. Uh, it's coming up right now. So the next spear will be breaking the shield. And then we are free to kill this Myrmidon. One thing about the shield is that whenever you line of sight, you will see me actually stuck behind the pillar here. The shield breaks and the damage that happens, which you can actually line of sight, happens usually about half a second to a second after the shield animation is gone. So you will see me linger a little bit, then move back out. So now that the Myrmidon is dead, the boss gets moved out from behind the pillar onto the rune, and now we're just cleaving down the two equally. So as you can see, the add is at 27%, boss is at 53.7%. The goal is to get the boss as close to 50% as possible before killing this add. So we essentially want this add the third add to die as the boss reaches 50%. Um, so if the add was below, I want to say about 40% health, 45% health, then you're fine to cleave off of the boss onto the add. Um, if the add was a little bit higher, you might want to focus some damage into the add. As the add dies, your ranged will definitely want to move behind this pillar. Um, or if you're on the other side, then behind that pillar. Get your channel off, which also gets you an arcane vulnerability reset, and then move out this way for the first portal bait. And whenever your range gets to this position, you're essentially going to bloodlust and just pump everything into the boss. So you'll see how this plays out right here. Again, my latent arcana channel off, I blink out, I pop all my cooldowns, I second pot, we bloodlust, and we just burn the boss. So as soon as our warlock gets here, uh, he actually places a lock gate that goes from right there to right here. And we're going to be using this gate to click it right after we get the big baits right here. So we pull the footage. Bait coming in in 7 seconds. You essentially just stack up on the edge right by the warlock gate. As soon as the bait comes out, you click the gate and you go to console. So it's fairly straightforward. As a mage, I'm going to actually be soaking middle a little bit here because it's quite high. There's about 10 stacks on it. And then I move over to console and this is where we deal with the first overload. 
So for the overload, you can have either your rogues, your paladins, if you have red paladins, um, or your mages really, click it, because they all have immunities. So rogues can cloak after they've clicked the console, mages can ice block, and click the console while they're in ice block, you just need to make sure you're super close to it. Um, and then paladins can obviously do it while they're bubbled. So for this first one, you don't really need any healing cooldowns. There's only three clicks on it. Um, and, you know, healers still have 10 seconds on Bloodlust at this point. So they're able to keep you up. I'm actually going to go back a little bit here. Um, so right after this console, this is where your range will start moving for the first bait. You see that we get this line, uh, the divider line. And this is going to start rotating. Right after the console is done, this line will start rotating in that direction. So your range will essentially want to get a reset right here, um, and then start following this line out towards that edge pillar. So we get console click, line, and it starts rotating. I will get a last reset, and then follow that line out. So you will see that I reset. And right as these gazes come out, I'm going to start following that line. A lot of a few of the range were ahead of me. And you just want to make it to this pillar as the line gets past it. And then you're going to actually be using this pillar right here to reset your stacks and using this entire area to bait. So we have a new set of, um, of nether portals coming in. And you essentially just want to be using this area right here to bait. It doesn't really matter how precise you are with your baiting. Uh, typically, you want to bait on this wall because you're going to be using the inside edge for something else, but you can basically bait wherever in this area. So at this point, we are also getting a beckon, which happens right after the bait. This is a great one to actually use bobs on if you have paladins. As you will see, I'm going to get a last reset. And then right after this reset, I move to the wall, bait, and as soon as the portals happen, I blink out of them. So right after you move out of these nether portals, you don't want to instantly book it back to the console because there's a beam that's coming from up there and it's actually rotating towards the raid. So this right here is about where the safe zone is. Anything out here you don't want to be in because you might get chopped up by the beam. So we essentially just wait right here until that beam rotates and then we go back to the console. We'll see it happen. The beam rotates, uh, the priests were actually moved out to grip, but then they move back, dodge the beam. As soon as it despawned, they go back to the console. And this is where you deal with the second overload. Now for the second overload, you can, again, either have rogues do it, which is the most ideal, or you can have your mages or red paladins do it. Uh, so for this one, you will want some major cooldowns. Uh, you should most likely have a barrier if you can, um, a rallying cry if you have a warrior, and then a third either like straight up healing cooldown or a hybrid cooldown like a darkness or something along those lines. Um, so right after that second console happens, then all your ranged will get a reset and then move to this inner pillar of the, of the pillar where you just bait it to. So this entire inner area we're not going to be using. So you can use the pillar to actually reset your stacks, dodge the red beams, um, and then just go back to the console after you got the bait off. This is where two minute cooldowns are back up. Um, if you can see my combust here is coming up in six seconds. And this is assuming that you actually use your cooldowns at the beginning of the phase. If you use your two minute cooldowns on cooldown the entire fight, um, then you will actually only get one set of two minutes in this last phase. But it kind of depends on how you actually end up breaking up those cooldowns. So here, you essentially just want to, again, deal with the console. And for this third one, we have one of our mages ice block. And then they are going to be dealing with the whole clicking situation instead of the rogues. Um, a few things as far as soaking goes. During the bait that happens right before this specific overload, so whenever your entire raid is out here at this pillar, you want your melee and your tanks to be soaking console because obviously the range DPS are far out, so they're not able to help out at all with soaking. And this is probably one of the sketchier parts of the fight. 
but as long as your uh, melee soak on time and maybe your tank helps out with like three or four stacks if they're a brewmaster then you're it, you should be able to get past that part pretty easily so again we do the console clicks and for this third one again we have a barrier assigned and we have darkness assigned um Two healing cooldowns should carry th this one fairly easily. There's not that much raid damage going out other than just the stacks uh, if people don't reset. So at this point, you're fairly safe. The one thing that might happen, which I actually saw happen quite often, is that your middle ward might start pressure surging right after you do this console. So as you can see uh, up in this corner, the middle ward is actually, whoops, the middle ward is completely depleted, um, but you only need one stack on it for it to not surge. So what I'm going to do is instantly blink in, and actually our Holy Paladin followed as well and a few other people, and I'm just going to pick up two stacks on it. As soon as that happens, this ward stops surging. So as, as long as you have at least a sliver of charge on it, it's not going to be surging. And it's not going to be getting drained either, because the boss is draining the blue wards. So at this point, you just move out to the last open uh, remaining area of the, of the encounter, um, and you're just going to be using this third pillar to line of sight, to bait, and to dodge the red beams, and the boss should, should die at this point. Okay, so that was a lot of information. W one last thing that I do want to mention about phase four is the damage buff because that obviously plays quite an important role in this phase so if you get the first damage buff you should count on getting b rest obviously check the b res um, monitor if you don't have one then it's a different story but at that point you should have a b rest second and third damage buffs will not be getting b rest most likely so if you get second or third damage buff that kills you you want to make sure that you move into a ward and soak it all the way up to 10 stacks before your buff runs out. Typically, when you have about six seconds left on that damage buff, that's when you want to move on to the ward and just soak to 10. That's going to help out your raid a tremendous amount uh, because stacks in that phase are quite tight. Uh, if, if you miss a few here and there, if a person forgets to soak for like 10, 15 seconds, that might be the difference between you actually making that check and, and wiping. If you have any questions uh, or want a more specific breakdown about a specific part of the fight maybe, make sure to leave those questions in the comment section or join my Discord where we can have a little more elaborate discussion about these things. But I really hope this video helped you out and if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.